What's up guys and welcome to Shifting Lanes. Today we're talking about my Lexus. I'd love to be working on my Lexus, but unfortunately a delay in shipping with suspension parts and a delay in a vendor getting parts has, uh, well, it's basically holding me up from doing the brakes and suspension the way I want to do them. However, I figured now would be a good opportunity to sit here and tell you guys why I'm super stoked to start working on it, more so than when I was getting ready to work on the M3. I actually think, and this might sound crazy, that this is a much better starting point for a project car than even an E46 M3. Let's start with what exactly we have here, and that is a 2002 Lexus IS300. The 300 stands for the 3 liter straight 6 living under the hood. That is a 2JZ, the GE, which was the naturally aspirated variant, not the GTE, which super fans, well, let's just say it makes them need a new set of pants. The IS came in many different variations overseas. Now in Japan, the IS was actually called the Alteza. It came with a 2 liter straight 6, not a 2J derivative, a completely separate engine. They got a diesel engine if, you know, you're into that sort of thing. You got the RS200, which is actually a really cool little car. It comes with the 3SGE Beams Edition, which made about 200 horsepower, had a screaming red line. You might know that engine from Corollas. Now, here in the States, we only got two variants. We got the base sedan, like my baby here, and you got the Sport Cross, which was a station wagon, which in its own right is still very, very cool. The sedan, you could get the W55 manual gearbox or an automatic transmission. Sport Cross only came in automatic. The problem I have with the IS, and it's something I'm aiming to rectify with this project, is Lexus launched the IS that was it. There was no hot variants. There was no performance lineup. F was still nearly a decade away, which to me was a real shame because this is a beautifully engineered car. It begged for a performance variant. It wouldn't have taken much time, effort, money in R&D, development, whatever you want to call it, to put a GTE motor perhaps in here. Give it a super driveline, super brake, super suspension, and you definitely have something that was capable of standing toe to toe with BMW's vaulted, vaunted, vaunted M3. Hell, there was even a Lexus IS 430, built by none other than the Millen family, Reese Millen, that family, World Rally Cross, Pikes Peak, all that fame and expertise went into making a V8, 3UZ to be specific, 4.3 liters, 350 horsepower when they were done with it. They put it in there, they spent the time fabricating, developing, everything for it. They backed it up with a super six speed, limited slip diff, the brakes to go along with it. And if that wasn't cool enough, Chip Foose, yes, Chip Foose of hot rodding fame, actually did the design work for the body. Now, admittedly, it was one of his much, 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 much tamer designs. Millen and Foose behind the same project. And Lexus didn't put it into production. And to make matters worse, they teased the world, specifically a young me, at the New York International Auto Show when they showed it there. They showed the IS430 there, and that, that was the moment that I fell in love with this little Japanese sports sedan. Now, I used to have an M3. Hell, I documented the trials and tribulations on this channel. And yet, I still think this is a better project than that. And why is that? Well, here are five reasons why the IS300 is better than the M3. Four project car. Don't get it. J a project car. M3 and this stock, M3 wins every time. Let's just make that clear. This is why I'm building this inspired by the prowess that is an E46 M3. Number five, reliability. Sure, reliability isn't the sexiest thing in the world, but let's face it, without it, all of our cars would be in a garage and never finished. My M3 Sure, we bought a high miler. Sure, we bought it for a low, low price, but it was just riddled with problems. The interior looked like it was attacked by a rabid Wolverine engine. Leaked oil almost everywhere. We had to replace the main seal 
and then we finally figured out that it was coming from the Vanos solenoid, which anyone who speaks BMW knows Vanos equals mucho dollar. If that wasn't enough, a caliper decided to seize, and I had to replace that, the pads, the rotors, the nine. Long story short, that thing was becoming a major headache. I know that's an isolated, isolated incident, not necessarily indicative of all BMWs, but when it comes to reliability, it's damn near impossible to beat Toyota Lexus of the early 2000s. And this thing, the sum total of what's wrong with it mechanically are brakes, and that's it. The bodywork needs some love. That's all my fault, that ain't Lexus's fault. The ride height with the suspension that I'm gonna be doing is not Lexus's fault, it's just the diameter of these beautiful VMR wheels and uh, tires. Honestly guys, if you haven't checked out VMR or you're in the market for new wheels, definitely check them out. They make some great stuff, it's really affordable. I'll put a description below, check them out. I understand this is a project car, obviously, Project cars come with a fair share of work to do on them. And but wouldn't you rather start with something that didn't need so much TLC, so much love, so much money to get back up and running before you could start with the fun stuff? Or why not start with a platform that is pretty much good to go, save for a few things here and there, and then you can get in the fun stuff. More power, body work, making it look cool, repainting the car, all that money that you would have spent or I would have spent on the BMW, I could spend on fun stuff. And to me, that's why I'm really, really, really excited to get into this. I've ordered a ton of parts. When they get here, I'm gonna be throwing them at it as quickly as I humanly can. It's gonna be awesome, it's gonna be a ton of fun. I'm not gonna be online searching for deals, for interior parts, for mechanical parts, all that stuff. I'm gonna be diving right into this. I, I, I don't know if it's coming through, but I am so excited because this thing's gonna be moving forward real fast real soon. Number four, and to be 100% honest, this could easily be number one. Get to more of that in a second. And that is the Lexus has some real world engineering behind it. I'm not just talking automotive engineering, I'm talking motorsport engineering, sports car engineering. That's where Naboki, Nabokai Kadiyama comes into play. If that name isn't familiar to you, let me give you a little bit of a history lesson. This guy was an engineer on Toyota's World Rally program. He had a hand, actually he was an engineer, on their World Sports Car programs, including their Le Mans prototypes, or GT1 at the time. Quite possibly the best era in Le Mans. Open rule book, crazy cars, crazy horsepower, insane speeds. And on the production side of things, yeah, he was an engineer with the Corolla. I know, super exciting, right? Not your grandmother's Corolla or your student driver Corolla, I'm talking about the AE86, the little legendary drift car. The car that was so good that drifters all over the world, specifically Japan, honed their skills on this little Corolla. Kadayama had a hand in engineering that car. But wait, probably the cherry on top and probably the reason why this car really deserved the GTE motor more than anything else he was the chief engineer on the Mark IV Supra. I mean, come on, man. The engineer actually worked on the Supra, worked with that engine. And, and nobody let him throw that motor in into the IS, yeah, whatever. Point of all of this is, is that this car was engineered by a top mind, one of the best. That makes this a great base for a project car. It makes it a great car to chuck a ton of horsepower in, put crazy suspension in, make it a drift car, make it a track car, make it a drag car, make it whatever you want because it's got the engineering chops behind it to back it up. Number three. Yeah, number three. <laughs> number three, and that's weight. Another unsexy sounding term. However, the IS300, it's got, it backs it up and here's why. The BMWs, the Audis, the Mercedes, all of those German cars, this was pretty much lighter than all of them. Now this thing's even lighter than my M3 was. Okay, so it's maybe 100, maybe 200 pounds lighter, but it's still lighter. You throw the same 333 horsepower, or 330 horsepower at it that the M3 had, 
got yourself a fun, fun little car. I mean, everybody knows removing weight is as good as adding power. In some cases, even better, because a lighter car will handle better. Now, yes, it's let down a little bit. I mean, a little bit by the 2JZ, which is cast iron block. The thing that makes it great for crazy horsepower kind of hurts the handling a little bit. However, it's still lighter. It still was heralded as a great handling sports sedan, or at least in its class, by all the top motor trend, car and driver. All of them had this thing right up with, and in some cases, above the BMW. Lightness is huge. Just ask Colin Chapman if you can find him. I mean, he's dead, but... Anyway, lightness is huge, and the IS300 has that going for it. You throw some lightweight body panels on here, project car, remember, and it's even better. Number two is cost. Let's face it, when you're doing a project car, you gotta think budget, you gotta think purchase price of the car, you gotta think purchase price of parts, in some cases, labor. It's unsexy, but without it, you have no project car. A good, a good conditioned M3 is gonna run you at least 10K, probably more, probably closer to 15K, somewhere in that ballpark for a good M3. Good one of these, I mean a great one of these, a perfect one of these, might cost you six grand. That's half the purchase price, and it won't take much to get this thing up to the same levels of performance as an M3. I mean, you could spend the same amount on a good M3 and have an M3, or you can have something a little bit different, a little bit unique, and parts won't kill you. I mean, parts for the BMW were so expensive, and not to mention the aftermarket, which is out of this world. The aftermarket for this it's fantastic, there's a huge community, a ton of people doing parts for this thing, and that's what brings me to the number one reason why this car is a better project car than an M3. It is endlessly tunable, that's easy speed. You can do just about whatever you want to this car for not much money. You wanna throw an LS in there, they got you covered. You wanna throw a Toyota V8 in there, a little bit more expensive, but you can do that too. And the best part about it is, if you are on a budget and you wanna get three, four, five hundred horsepower easy, one JZ, two JZ, the GTE turbo variants, they bolt right in. R154 transmission to back up the power. Again, not that expensive. You could build this thing from a tame, fun, 400 horsepower daily driver that's gonna run forever, or you can have a thousand horsepower monster that's gonna dominate on the drift. Drift track, drift track, circuit, you can go circuit racing. You can have an insanely fast drag car. You can have whatever you want for, again, it's all out there. It's all easily accessible and it's not that much money. In a project car, you basically start with what you want your end result to be, what you're looking to get out of the car. Then you look at a, the cars that can kind of fit that bill. IS300 fits that and then some. I have many different options I can go with this car. Well, I have a many different options. Where I'm going is I'm keeping her NA, just trying to get to that magical same horsepower to weight ratio as the M3. Have a, and I can tell you, man, a stock M3, even one as broken as mine was, is a hell of fun car. It is insanely fun to drive around. I can get there in this. Granted, NA isn't the most cost-effective way of doing it, but even so, still relatively inexpensive. It's, again, I'm so stoked to where this car can go because it's just, an, it's an open canvas, a blank canvas. You can do whatever you want to it. I'm choosing my route. You can go out and buy yours, throw whatever engine you want in it and have just a ton of fun doing so. These things are also pretty easy to work on. The M3 is, forget about it, man. It's so tight and cramped in there that this is a better start for your project. Mark my words. Guys, I just want to take this second to thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that little thumbs up button. Share it with your friends. We really appreciate all of that sort of stuff. Hell, if you disagree with me, if you want to tell me I'm an idiot, just drop a comment below. We read them all and we try not to cry too much when they're negative. If you want to hit me up on social media, at Chenity83, Instagram, Twitter, Shifting Lanes, same platforms, 
on Facebook at Shifting Lanes. If you want to get some of our merch, we got a ton of great merch out there. Every dime that you give us from that merch goes directly into our project cars. That would be my Lexus, Hanson's BRZ. He's doing really cool stuff with that. He's taking it to the track. He's learning how to be a better driver, autocrossing the hell out of that thing. He just put new suspension in it. I highly recommend you check out his videos. Greg's fixing the Volvo, which is the ultimate sleeper. I mean, who thinks speed when they think of Volvo? Most people don't, we do. It's awesome, check it out. We also have the world's most famous, or at least YouTube's most famous Aston Martin, owned by Doug DeMuro, owned by Tavares, now owned by us. That thing's getting a brand new wrap, new video on that coming out soon. And speaking of, up of upcoming videos, next time you'll be seeing this car, hopefully I'll be installing brake and suspension components on it. It's all dependent on when parts get here. Suspension's end of the month. We're in the middle of the month, so everything should be okay. Again, thank you for watching. I'm Chad. Me and the Lexus, we'll catch you next time. My script's running away. <laughs>